Good morning and welcome to worship at St. John's United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you are joining us virtually this morning as we celebrate Pentecost and Graduation Sunday. We are now in phase one of our reopening plan. For more details about what is included in phase one, please look in the opportunities email. Please note that we are looking for local virus numbers to decline for two weeks in order to move to phase two. We will release the remaining phases in the next week or so, and we'll be posting all phases on the church website for your reference. One of the options in phase two is the viewing of the live stream worship service in groups of 10 or less in homes of our members. Please see the opportunities email for additional details and for a Google form that will let us know if you would like help finding a small group of members with which to worship together, or if you are willing to host a group in your home. We have extended our annual Epworth Children's Home Mother's Day offering through Father's Day this year. Please send in your Epworth offering with a note telling us about someone in your life who has been a mentor to you or has had a lasting impact in your life. You may also use the link to the Google form in the opportunities email. Your offering will be given to Epworth in honor or in memory of the person or persons that you share with us. We would like to share these names with our church family as we celebrate both the ministry of Epworth and the ways in which our lives have been positively influenced by those who have loved us. Let us begin worshiping together. I invite you to pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit. The one who sang a new melody as God's creation rose from chaos, who wept at the dark shadows of the cross, and who danced early in the morning at the opening of an empty tomb. Come, Holy Spirit. The one who cannot be contained by wind or flame or breath. The one who blesses the church with courage, peace, and love. 
Come, Holy Spirit, to us, who gather this day with trembling hands and uncertain hearts. Teach us to sing a new song and to dance with a reckless abandon. Here in this gathering of believers, as you did with those so long ago, breathe on us now. Breathe on us, blowing away our fears and our hesitations. Breathe on us, transforming our hard-heartedness into passion-filled lives. Breathe on us, for we need peace. Peace that only you can give. In the name of Jesus, amen. Even in your homes, I invite you to stand as we recite our call to worship. The Spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world in a just and caring community. The Spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. Spirit of the living God, come to us and transform our lives by your power. We invite you to sing our opening hymn for your gift of God the Spirit. Please join me in this morning's collect. God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore, to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Jesus our Savior, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
This afternoon's children's ministry Zoom will be at 12.15 as we have a children's sermon about Pentecost. And then again at 4 o'clock on Wednesday as we meet together and, and check in with one another and see how we're all doing. We'll see you in a little while. Good morning. My name is Val Kinney, and I have the honor and privilege of being the Director of Youth and College Ministries here at St. John's. Today, along with celebrating Pentecost Sunday, we also take time to honor our 2020 high school and college graduates. As their names are read, there will be a picture of the graduates on your screen. As a congregation and family of God, we celebrate the accomplishments of all our graduates. Well done and congratulations. Our 2020 high school graduates are Ryan Tillman Bean, Lydia Grace Beard, Jackson Blake Berry, Alexander James Constantine, William Ray Danley, Margaret Grace Eddie, Caitlin Marion Ferry, Kristen Ashley Ferry, Hayden Riley Fowler, Mary Frances Hall, Kyle Aiden Jenkins, Michael Henry Keynes, Elizabeth Ashley Elizabeth Motes, Maddie Grace Smith. Our college graduates 2020, Emily Ruth Baker, John Clayton Bates, Kelsey Jean Becknell, Catherine Mary Rose Chamberlain, Christopher Allen Chamberlain, Joseph Nelson Eddy, Brandon Russell Johnson, Bradley Chambers Kirkman, Ashley Martha Lumpkin, Lauren McKenzie Summers, Harris Quinn Vaughn, Patrick Joseph Williams. We congratulate you and acknowledge your accomplishments. Each year during Graduate Recognition Sunday, we have one of our seniors or graduates who comes and addresses their fellow graduates in our congregation. And today it's my honor to introduce Maddie Smith. Good morning, everyone. I am Maddie Smith, a graduating senior at South Point High School. I first want to say it's so interesting being up here without a full congregation. When I walked into church this morning, it was strange not hearing the hum of voices in the lobby as I went up the stairs. These noises are very familiar and comforting to me as I've gone to St. John's my whole life and I've grown up here. I hung out in the nursery as a baby when my parents were at church. I lived for children's church from ages four to six and I attended the after school program with Sweet Miss Green from kindergarten to fifth grade. I went through confirmation here in the spring of my sixth grade year where I bonded with friends who will be graduating alongside me this Friday and Saturday. These friends and I grew up going to children's church, Sunday school, and after school program together and developed friendships centered around a mutual love of Christ. As these friends and I prepare to graduate and take on the world, I think we can all agree it's not exactly happening the way we thought it would. As I'm sure you all know, the class of 2020 had the last two months of their senior year cut short by the coronavirus pandemic, which forced the closure of all public schools. On Thursday, March 12th, I walked out of the doors of South Point High School, expecting to come back to school on Monday, refreshed from a long weekend. The next day, I was going on a campus tour of Clemson, the university where I will be spending my next four years. And that Saturday, my best friend was throwing her birthday party. I had no idea that these two things would be the last public forms of interaction with others 
that I would have for almost two months. As my little sister, who will be going into high school next year, lightheartedly put it, this has been the longest three-day weekend ever. On a more serious note, the last few months have been full of sadness, heartbreak, and uncertainty. While they might not seem important to others who are in different stages of life, events like prom and graduation are events that seniors like me look forward to their whole lives, and for them not to happen at all or in a traditional manner is a very difficult thing to grapple with. Over the last few months, though, one thing that has brought me comfort is knowing that the Lord has a plan. Throughout high school, even before this, when I was nervous or sad about something, a passage that always brought me comfort was Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This verse has been extremely helpful for me, especially during this time, because it's probably been the most uncertain time I've ever experienced. During the period of time when I was unsure if I would even get to have a graduation ceremony at all, I was assured that one ceremony does not define me or my class. What does define each and every one of us, not just the class of 2020, is the love Jesus has for each of us. In the verse I just read, Paul says the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds. This time is uncertain for all of us, but what is certain throughout all of time is that Jesus' love for us extends past any pandemic. In a time when all of us, students or not, are seeking answers about the future, we can be assured through prayer that Jesus understands and feels our uncertainty and has a plan for how we will all come out of this stronger and better able to make new disciples in his name. I do not exactly know what college will look like in the fall, and I'm sure it will be slightly different than the average college experience. Whatever it may look like though, I will say I'm extremely thankful to everyone at St. John's for providing me with an amazing foundation for a relationship with Christ these past 18 years that I will continue to grow in college. I could not imagine going to church anywhere else, and I cannot wait until we can all be together in here again. Thank you. Maddie, thank you so much uh, for that good word. Uh, this is an unfathomable time uh, for all of us, uh, but especially for those who are uh, having to do these uh, monumental moments in their life a little bit differently um, than would have been expected. And so we want to lift them up in prayer. Uh, but right now, uh, I want to offer up our Pentecost epistle lesson this morning, which comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the second half of verse 3 uh, through 13. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does all the work in us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives them the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives a great faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit. And we all share the same spirit. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. We come to the portion of our worship service where we offer up our petitions 
uh, those things that are weighing heavy on our hearts, or, or those joys that, that we want to shout from the mountaintops. These have been tough days. Uh, there is no doubt about that. Uh, as so many of us have watched the news and uh, almost watched our country be set on fire. And on this Pentecost Sunday, uh, my prayer is really simple. It is come Holy Spirit. Uh, it is come Holy Spirit and transform us uh, into your image. Uh, those of you who are, are, are dealing with sickness, uh, whether it be COVID, uh, whether it be cancer, whether it be anything, we, we want to lift up those petitions on your behalf this morning. For those of you who are rejoicing, uh, whatever celebration, whether it's graduating, uh, whether it's the, the welcoming in of a new life, uh, whatever that is, we want to lift those up too. So this morning, this Pentecost Sunday morning, I invite you to pray with me. O Holy Spirit, source of creation, come to those who are ill or in trouble to heal them in body, mind, and soul, that they may return to abundant life. O Holy Spirit, mind of God, come to those in power to enlighten their minds with your mercy and wisdom, that their work may reflect and extend your will for all creation. O Holy Spirit, presence of Christ, come to those you call your own to enlighten their minds with your grace and your truth, that we may be your hands and feet in this world you love. O Holy Spirit, comforter and companion, come to all of us to guide our actions and words, that we may rejoice in your presence and make this world your home. O Holy God, who is Father, Son, and Spirit, we pray these in all your prayers for the glory of your name and the spirit of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in its own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not these all men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I said. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, 
this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I want to just add my thanks to John and Maddie and Aiden for being a part of our worship services today. They are fine examples of the entire group of young people who are graduating from high school, college, and even those graduating with postgraduate degrees who are from uh, St. John's. And I particularly appreciate Maddie's words about the foundation that they received here in this church, you all should be proud of uh, your participation in their lives. I'm sure they will all be successful in their endeavors because of the part you played, because of the love of Jesus Christ that is shed abroad in their hearts. Would you bow with me, please, for a word of prayer? Oh God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. One of the mentors in ministry for me, and I have mentioned his name several times, is Dr. Reginald Mallett, who had the most unusual self-depreciating way about him. He tells the story of, of preaching um, a series of services in um, the Dorset area there in England, and he noticed a little lady who sat down close to the front who every night seemed to be paying particular attention. And the first night as he stood at the door greeting people as they left, she smiled as she shook, her, shook his hand and said, you're something else. And then the second night after Dr. Mallet had preached, Again, she met him at the door and she said, you're something else. Third night and fourth night, they finally got to the last night of the services and he said to his wife, you know, I think I might be due some, some better or some further compliment than that. And so he decided to ask her, which he did at the door. And she said, well, you're certainly no preacher, so you must be something else. Preachers all over the world are struggling today on how they might best tell the story. We've come to a very special time in the life of our church, and I'm afraid that we usually miss the significance of Pentecost Sunday. I remember some time ago I read a statement from Dr. Jerry Vines, who at the time was the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, and he said this, the average Christian and the average church are somewhere bogged down between Calvary and Pentecost. They have been to Calvary for pardon, he said, but they have not been to Pentecost for power. Bethlehem, he continued, Bethlehem means God with us. Calvary means God for us. But Pentecost means God in us. I'd like to borrow from his quote for just a few moments this morning and, 
and suggest to you just how important this Sunday is in the life of our church. He said, Bethlehem means God with us. Theologians love to throw around a word, uh, incarnation, which is just a fancy way of saying we don't really understand fully what it means that God came to be a part of our lives. But God came down. He was incarnate among us in the baby Jesus of Bethlehem. Please remember, the word, halagos in Greek, is eternal. The word has always been. But God did something new. God did something different. God did something earth-shatteringly significant when God came to be one of us. And it stretches our minds beyond our ability to comprehend that the one who was fully divine was indeed fully human. John, as he's beginning his gospel, tells us, in most beautiful words, in the beginning was the Word, Halagos, I mentioned a moment ago. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. But if we continue to read down in verse 14 of chapter 1, John says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have beheld his glory the glory of the only one who has come from the father full John says full of grace and truth Bethlehem means God with us but those of us who know the story could quickly make the transition. We understand what Dr. Vines was saying when he said Calvary means God for us. You know, the scripture writers use a word that's quite unusual. It's not a word that we use in our everyday conversation. The English word is propitiation. And if you happen to read the New American Standard Bible in John, for, excuse me, 1 John 4.10, you would read, In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation. Or as the New International Version says, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Elosmos is a reference to, to those old black and white movies that we used to watch, that you remember how the cavemen and cave women were personified and they were trying to appease the, the god of the volcano and they would throw the virgin off into the volcano so that they might not all be destroyed. The virgin in that scenario is the propitiation. John tells us that the very epitome of love is that God sent his son to be that atoning sacrifice for us. Or maybe it's a little bit easier to understand from a little chorus we used to sing a long time ago. He paid a debt. He did not owe, I owed a debt, I could not pay. I needed someone to take my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. He paid a debt that I could never pay. Bethlehem means God for us. Calvary means God, excuse me, Bethlehem means God with us. Calvary means God for us, but Pentecost means God in us. 
And I certainly wouldn't want any individual, and I certainly wouldn't want our church to miss the importance of the power of God that's in the individual for the common good of the church, or else we are just a gathering of like-minded people like any other civic or organization. I would remind some of you it was a conversation we had just about two years ago. I could not for the life of me understand how I could possibly do Holy Communion here in this beautiful sanctuary with the communion table so strongly affixed to the beauty of this woodwork. And I suggested that in other occasions like this, we had an anti-table, it's called, a table that would sit out front so that the pastor could face the congregation as we celebrated Holy Communion. I don't know if you've ever noticed it or not, but there's a reason there's a reason that the pastor needs to face the congregation. Everything he or she says and everything he or she does has a significance in that most beautiful sacrament. There's a particular place as we're working our way through the liturgy and we come to what's called those of us who study such things, the epiclesis, we, we love to use big words just to impress people, right? The epiclesis is an invocation or a calling down of the Holy Spirit into what we're about to do. In other words, you may remember in our Holy Communion liturgy, the celebrant says... Pour out your spirit on us gathered here. And I always try, in case someone is looking up from their paper, I always try to sweep my hand across and cover the entire people. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And then the pastor is directed in the rubrics to place their hands toward the elements and say, and on these gifts of bread and wine. You see, we're asking that the Holy Spirit fills all of us gathered together and that the Holy Spirit do something very special to the ordinariness of what's on the table so that it might become for us extraordinary. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Do you see the connection from that action to the scripture lesson this morning? You see, that outpouring of the Holy Spirit had a purpose. As Aidan was reading the story for us just a few moments ago, those who were seeing what was going on asked, and I'm referring back to verse 8, then how is it that each of us hears them speaking in our own native language? You see, those who were speaking, being filled by the Holy Spirit, were speaking a language that was unknown to them. But the beauty of the story is that it was known to everyone present. Not one small detail was left out. And then down in verse 11, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. You see, there's the purpose. There's the proclamation of the word, the wonders of God, 
being heard by everyone present. No one was left out. And then there was the assimilation of God's provision into their lives. The very last verse that Aidan read for us, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You see, for me, that's the word of God. When the Holy Spirit takes the word that is spoken, enables the ears to hear it, and then assimilates that word, or in other words, enables the individual's heart to receive it. And when the Spirit of God is implanted in our hearts, it begins to change us from the inside out, from the creatures that we were before into the people of God. Or, as that liturgy says, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. You, no doubt, will keep up from here on out because for the rest of the summer, for the rest of this church year, we will be in a, a, a period of time called ordinary time. And please, please don't think of that time in our casual understanding of the word ordinary. It doesn't mean plain or without distinction. But it's called ordinary time as opposed to cardinal time. You may remember from school there are cardinal numbers and then there are ordinal numbers. Do you remember cardinal numbers? One, two, three, four, but ordinals denote place, first, second, third, fourth. And so from now for the, through the rest of the summer, we'll be counting our Sundays by ordinal time. Next Sunday will be the first Sunday after Pentecost. June the 14th will be the second Sunday after Pentecost. Ordinal time. And I pray that for us as individuals and for us as a church, it will not be ordinary, but extraordinary. I'm reminded of the way Pastor Rick Kirchhoff wrote it. He put it this way when he was addressing a group of Methodists in Memphis, Tennessee. He was talking about Pentecost and he said this, when God sends forth the Spirit, amazing things happen. Barriers are broken. Communities are formed. Opposites are reconciled. Unity is established. Diseases are cured. Addictions are broken. Cities are renewed. Races are reconciled. Hope is established. People are blessed. And church really happens. He continues on, today the Spirit of God is present and we're going to have church. So be ready, get ready, God is up to something. Discouraged folks, cheer up. Dishonest folks, fess up. Sour folks, sweeten up. Closed folks, open up. Gossipers, shut up. Conflicted folks, make up. Sleeping folks, wake up. 
lukewarm folks fire up, dry bones shake up, and pew potatoes, I love that one, pew potatoes stand up. But most of all, Christ the Savior is all of all is lifted up. You bow with me, please, for a word of prayer. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for the outpouring of your precious Holy Spirit. We have tried, Lord, to be your people on our own initiative and on our own strength, and we fail miserably. But when we are filled with your Holy Spirit power, we can sense ourselves becoming the people of God. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. We come to that time in our service when we offer ourselves and our gifts to God. And I would just remind you that you can give electronically through our church app. If you don't have that app, which carries all of our calendar and all of our information, it also enables you to give electronically. And you can find it where you get your apps under St. John's UMC dash Rock Hill. Or you can simply text the word St. John's RH Give all together. St. John's RH Give to 77977 as we give of ourselves to God. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. May we bow for a word of prayer. Holy God, we thank you for sending your spirit 
the spirit of the risen Christ from heaven. Help us to be like the early disciples, praying patiently as we wait for your guidance and your power. Fill our hearts and our minds with your gifts of faith, hope, and love. And may our conversations with people of every language and culture around us witness to your grace and your mercy. We dedicate ourselves and our offerings to your good purposes in the world. Through our church's mission, by the power of your Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning, if you're following along in your hymnal, of course, the words are on the screen, but it's number 331. And we invite you to sing with us right where you are as we sing together, Holy Spirit, come confirm us. And now receive this blessing. Go out into the world and labor to bring forth new life. Dream dreams. Pursue visions. And speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. And may the God who breathed life into creation be your delight. May Christ Jesus give hope to your dreaming. And may the Holy Spirit, your advocate and supporter, set your hearts ablaze with a passion for peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.